I'm immunologist basically, so I moved to hematology over years uh, recently and uh, to translational even later on because I think it's uh, moving to translational research is really the, the matter of uh, maturation. Within the OEO department, I think we, we won uh, a lot because uh, we can really get synergy between the teams, which we didn't really have before because uh, uh, since the CRCM is quite a large uh, institute now, uh, with more than 400 people, it's difficult to know everyone. Uh, but within a department, then we can really share things, share ideas and share technologies. Uh, so I think it's really a, a big jump for us and, uh, and a big advantage to be organized as such. For, for a long time, uh, researchers were really working, trying to increase knowledge and uh, then bring the knowledge to the, to the bed, bedside. Uh, now we start to see some research program where the clinicians are coming with their questions and ask us, do we have a model, do we have an idea? Uh, how to address that because I get two patients that didn't respond as I expect. So I think we have our place now to also make research uh, depending on the, the medical need and the, the, the staff that are given within hospital. So I think this bidirectional uh, exchange is, uh, is just an incredible uh, added value, especially here at CRCM because we are on the same site, we just have to cross the parking. Uh, so that's really a big advantage, I think, yeah. The CRCM has been the first one to start with um, uh, reduced conditional regimen for transplantation, uh, meaning that, that we can transplant uh, people that have leukemia. The treatment is uh, the cure, is really the, the transplantation. And we can start to transplant people that are older and older because leukemia, at least the acute myeloid leukemia on which my team is working, uh, is a disease of old people, of elderly. So now we can really uh, transplant people over 70 years old, which was not the case even 10 years ago. So I think it's really a, a big uh, new development that, uh, that was achieved, uh, to my knowledge, first here in Marseille. So that was really a, a concern. When we decided to be organized in departments, we said some, some researcher was thinking that maybe department will just uh, separate things and then we will lose uh, somehow a strength, which is the diversity of the fundamental research program. So one of the ideas was to cross-fertilize uh, the departments is to start thinking on research programs that may interest, for example, DNA repair, that may interest metabolism, that may interest everyone in the center. So I have been in charge of uh, thinking to such a project and uh, we came up with the idea to work maybe on aging, on hematopoietic aging especially, because as uh, I mentioned, uh, some diseases in hematology are really diseases of elderly. So the idea was, can we measure uh, the real age of people in terms of biology and not in terms of ID cards? So the idea is not to get the apparent age, but the real biological age. And uh, that will be one of the, of the program we want to develop together with the people working on metabolism and DNA repair. Because for example, what is really important to think is that microenvironmental cues, uh, pesticides and stuff like that, uh, are um, harming our body over years. So meaning that somebody which is exposed or which is not exposed, at the end, do not have the same real biological age. So the idea is to, to ask this kind of question behind that.
I think it's really important for, for us today to get uh, Arnold Donner, Professor Arnold Donner, as a keynote speaker because he is uh, uh, writing the European Leukemia Net recommendation every two years and this somehow fill the project we, we develop because depending on this recommendation then patients are stratified in the adverse, intermediate or uh, good prognosis depending on which group the patient belongs uh, then it won't be treated the same and we won't make the same research program depending on the patients uh, so I think this is somehow really important to, to get this view of international uh, collaboration because we can then put together uh, clinical data and samples and, uh, and then address questions in silico, in computers and then once we tested the hypothesis on a large cohort in silico then we can really decipher okay these patients will benefit from our research program and we have to focus on this kind of patients uh, in order to, to improve the treatments that we can give in the hospital. So that's the, all the idea of this broad uh, data mining international collaboration uh, on data and on samples and sharing samples, sharing ideas uh, and so on and so forth.